my um, my user experience using the special LABD, um, let's say that this is a beginner user experience. So I will do my best to explain um, the main feature that I have tested and, and how to do a particular task. Um, so uh, the agenda to discuss uh, in this meeting is a brief introduction to the to the spatial LIBD project, the components that are included, and then the user guides that are included, and then we can like explore in detail to do particular tasks. Also, uh, regarding the Chinese web application, uh, I will show how to navigate the Chinese app, also how to make your own annotations, and briefly, I will explain how to deploy your own special LIDD uh, web application with your own data. So, um, first, uh, here is the, uh, let me make it bigger. Uh, this is the, the package, is the, the name is special LIDD. And I think that uh, this is, these are the, the three important uh, topics to discuss. Uh, and we need to comprehend that this is a Chinese web application that is hosting uh, in this uh, in this IP IP address. And we can and this uh, and this uh, site can um, only handle a limited set of concurrent users. Uh, this is also a bioconductor a bioconductor package that lets you analyze the data and run local versions of, of the of the uh, on the web applications and also there is a research article that is linked to to the package where you can explore in, uh, in analyze uh, data regarding to the DLPFC. But also you can like uh, explore the, there are links to explore the code and explore the figures uh, um, related to the article, and you can uh, get a lot of details uh, in these links. Well, um, let's go directly to the, to the app. So this is the, let me make it here, sorry. Okay, this is the, the package. This is the version 1.17.2. And these packages uh, is maintenance for Leonardo Colado. And for uh, and this is uh, there is uh, more collaborators into the project uh, that have contributed to different parts of the project. But he is um, also the, in, in a collaboration with the investigation with Kristen Armina and Andrew E. J. for the I think that for the first release. Uh, so next we can see uh, what I mentioned before that is referring to the Chinese app web application and what is the power of the application in terms that you can explore your data or make um, some kind of analysis. The data that are included uh, are referred in the article. This is the study site. You can explore um, how many samples are included and how were, were done the manual annotations. But also you can access uh, in, this, uh, in this first tab the basics uh, related to the installation and also um, what is, uh, let's say, uh, a previous uh, knowledge required. So this is, the, I think that this part is important because it's explaining um, part of the objects and also what are the packages that are most, uh, let's say, is the structure of the package. So you can, uh, with that, um, have a, a very brief caption of how is, how is uh, this working internally. Also, there is uh, information about asking for help and the citation uh, in case that you use the package. Uh, another important thing here to explore is the reference. In the reference, we can have access to all the functions that are available in the package. So this is a very uh, good point to start because when we are using the package, package we usually uh, use the, the vignettes uh, that helps the functions active uh, doing something. But uh, there are more, um, let's say, parameters available in all the functions included. So for example, the uh, ones that I use a lot is the visualization functions. So these are here uh, at the end of the, of the, at the bottom of the page. 
So for example, uh, if, I, if I want to use this clause, I just uh, here can access information regarding uh, all the parameters that are acceptable, the, the different options that are, uh, are listed here. So here are the arguments, are the information, um, indeed it's very well explained, so you can always consult uh, any question that you have. Another important thing is that we can see uh, how is handled this. Uh, this uh, the, the, let's say the object that returns when we are using the, this function. So it can be useful if you want to add additional information to the, to the objects that you are generating. Uh, and also it's important to see that we here can access examples. So not only uh, uh, we have the examples of the big netters, but here we have uh, some other examples that the share the information with different options and okay, this is complementary to, to all the information that we have. So it's, I think that it's very important to review the reference before to start with the package. Here in the in this tab, uh, I, I found it very useful because you can not only find uh, indeed the, the, the article indeed, but we can find the guides to make different tasks. For example, here's the guide to perform the special registration. So this is a contribution uh, uh, from Luis. So you can uh, here read what is the special registration or the concept, the main concepts that it's very important that we want just to have, a, let's say, a, a, big, a big picture of the process. There is also an overview of the spatial registration method and the main steps to, to perform the downstream analysis. And also there is information on how to run uh, the, the spatial registration with the, with the tool. So you can here follow the guides. Um, and so it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's more easy to, to follow the workflow uh, with examples and how to query the data and all the rest of. Um, also, there is a guide the IIT is the one of the last implementations uh, to the package that is the guide to the multi gene plots. This is a contribution from, from Nick, from Nick Eagles and, and Leonardo Colado. And also here you can find, uh, let's say, the concepts of what is uh, what, what implies to perform a multi gene plot. You can also uh, get access. Uh, with examples that are in sequencing order in order that, that you can like notice the difference between uh, one analysis or another. This is particularly useful to, to look at different continuous variables at what time. So I found it very useful to do my job. Uh, so here you can find a lot of examples uh, with complementary, uh, uh, let's say statistics in order to, to get more, more details about your, your plots. So here are also the, the available um, statistical models in the function. So you can find all the information and in the, in the details in these guides. So here are also examples. You can just copy and paste if you are uh, running the application uh, in code. So here is everything. And also in this last one guide is um, also a guide that is um, that is a uh, from uh, a contribution from Abby Spangler, Brenda Pardon, and Leonardo Colado that is explaining how to use the the tool uh, with uh, public data. So this is important if we want to compare um, different outputs and we want to try different samples. So. Uh, here it's explaining how to again how to install the application, knowledge requires, but also it has the steps to download the data, uh, load the packages, and all the information that you need. So I think that this is the second step to try if we want to get in more details about the application because comparing output you can get a lot of information. So I think that you can try this one. But also uh, in the last step, we can find information about the how uh, what is the contribution in each one of the newest releases. So here you can find um, if you are, for example, if you use the the last time that you use the statual LIBD was the one point thirteen. You can look at 
what new features were added uh, to the different versions. Okay, so uh, this is the, the introduction of the app. Uh, the second step that I'm going to explain, to explain is uh, how to navigate in the Shiny app application. So uh, for this example, uh, for this meeting, I'm going to focus particularly in the, in the manual annotations and, and how to perform uh, or consult certain kind of plots. So for do that, um, I open the, I open the, the, the spatial LIDD app that has previously loaded the, the samples um, from the, um, from the, the, the human dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. So we are going to try here some samples. We have here in the, in the web interface, um, let's say um, different tabs that uh, is going to give you access to different kind of data. For example, here in the, in the spot level data, uh, we have access to information that is related with each one of the spots in the spatial, um, in the spatial aware uh, context. But also, when we are, if we want to try the label layer data, this is an aggregation um, function that is going to, to show the information related with layers, with layer label. Is said here. Uh, so for for this uh, meeting, I'm going to explain the export label data. When we uh, have different submenus, when you can like uh, try different kind of of data and samples. So here we have a lateral menu. The lateral menu is um, uh, showing the number of samples that you have loaded in this in this. Um, in this rapid, uh, in the web application. So this is the number of samples that I have available. I'm going to pick up the first one. Then we can uh, like select the type of images that we can look at. Uh, usually the default, well, the default is the lower resolution, but you can pick up different resolutions. I have an edited image too. Uh, also, I have a, a scroll box here where uh, I think that this is important. You have available two kinds of different measures. Uh, one is the distant variables, and one is in the other one is the continuous variables. So when we are uh, when we pick up the distant variables, we are looking usually um, variables that are classifying classes. So you can consult here clusters or uh, other kind of measures that you divide in classes. Uh, for example, the manual annotation is uh, by, I think that is by definition, uh, uh, is dividing classes, so it's a discrete variable. And also, if you can uh, pick up continuous variables. These continuous variables are uh, plus the, the sum of UMIs of the sum of genes of the sum of mitochondrial ratio uh, or percentages are also included there different features that are usually in the genes. So also you can uh, select different um, color scales. Uh, this, this particular scroll box is to, it's uh, linked to the discrete variable. You have another one here below, uh, here, that this is linked to the continuous variable. So you need to be careful to select the correct one because when I was, when I start with this, I usually mix, for example, I look, look at uh, the discrete variable, and then uh, for some reason, I scroll to the thin color scale that is linked to the continuous variable, so nothing happens. So for example, I, I look this one um, here. I'm going to start with the clusters. This, is, this corresponds to this sample, so here, I can um, look at the, let's say the shade of network network at, at four clusters. And so we can see here uh, the image that correspond to this, uh, to this uh, cluster resolution. So you can see here the different uh, clusters derived from the K, but we can also pick up K equal nine. So you can see 
a more fine resolution and, and so on. Uh, here I can look at the different uh, the color scale, let's say whatever. So you can hear a different uh, composition of colors depending on how many clusters you have. Maybe you need to pick up a different color scale. This is for the discrete uh, variables, and but you can also here um, define the the point size that you want to see. Let's say that I'm going to make it uh, bigger, the three. So we have here uh, bigger spots. Um, uh, so this is a cluster static function. So you can also download this uh, image if you want. So just I only click in the button and I open the image and you can share this image. Uh, the other function is to uh, the cluster interactive. Here in the cluster interactive, um, I have here, um, I'm going to pick up, okay. It's, it's this one. So the, I'm, we are looking at the, we are looking at the same image uh, to the cluster resolution equal to K, to K equal nine. But here, let's say that I'm going to add um, uh, here, for example, here are the humans of the neighbors. Uh, you can also pick up different scales that you have available. For example, I have, uh, by, by default, are the low counts loaded? But you can also pick up uh, absolute counts. So the scale is going to, uh, I'm not sure if it changed. Let's see. No, it's going to change in the gene in the in the gene uh, tabs. We are going to go back to that. Um, and also, um, in this uh, one, you can make selections of particular regions um, of each one of the of the slides. Also, if you want to see, let's say, uh, several images at once, uh, there is a submenu that is cluster grid. And it's uh, in a static uh, image. So, for example, I have listed here all the all the samples that are included in this uh, study. So, let's say that I'm going to select the first four. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. I have to define the number of rows, two rows, the two columns, and also I can define here. Uh, let's say that I'm going to change to to ten clusters. Um, I'm going to make it smaller the font size, number two, and I'm always you need to update the, the image. Every time that you change one parameter here, you need to update the image in order to have um, what you want. You can also um, download the image and share the resource um, as I showed previously. Um, one of the options that I have used more is the gene styles and the gene interactive to make different things. For example, I usually pick up this one when I want to analyze uh, information that is related with continuous variables. For example, let's say that I want to look at uh, the sum of UMIs. So I can see here uh, the scale and it's showing the, the sum of UMIs uh, related with this image. You can also here like play a bit with the gene scale, for example. This is in count. Some of you guys know. Oh, so that's because you're plotting the continuous variable. You're plotting a sum UMI, not the, not the counts or log counts. Mm, okay. Okay. So he me thank you. So here you can also uh, make the same. You can pick up the color scale. You can also um, uh, define a minimum value to look at. For example, let's say that I want to look at the 
are the spots that are up to, to the mean. That is 5,000. So it's going to refresh and only I'm going to look at the spots that are up to this value. Um, this other, the gene, the gene interactive, uh, it's, I'm going to, this is, these are the number of clusters that I have active uh, in, for this example, for example. So let's say that I want to, I'm going to, to look at all the, to look at all the spots. And also, uh, let's say that you can explore a particular um, cluster that you want to look at, for example, number one. So you can see here, uh, see, uh, the information related with, with, the, with this cluster. And also you can see uh, the number of UMIs or the scale of UMIs that is uh, inside this uh, definition, inside this class. Um, another use is, for example, if you want um, to make uh, an annotation to further analysis. So for this case, what we do is, what, what I do particularly is to select an image, um, Let's say that I'm going to, I will do that in, in cluster interactive. Yeah, cluster interactive. Yeah. So let's say that here I'm going to select, but I'm going to do a manual annotation. So, here is a here is a, a text box when you can define your label, your per, your personal label, your custom label, and you have two options to select the manual annotations. One is uh, selecting just one spot at a time, and the other is uh, using um, like a lasso to select several uh, spots uh, at the same time. Uh, after that you make a selection, you can um, you can download this uh, CDR, CSV file in order to make uh, another analysis further. And you can uh, pick up the option to drop an ACE uh, entries in the CSV file, so you are going only to keep the one that have information. So for this uh, particular sample, let's say that I'm going to pick up the last one here. You can pick up from here. And I'm going to make, I don't know, a side, I make a circle, and here I'm going to set a name to the circle. And okay. Yes, I think it's okay. And then um, I can download the. So if you look at the file, at the CSV file, you can look at here, the annotation of these uh, particular spots. This is the number of the sample ID. And this is the spot name, and this is the manual annotation. Uh, then I'm going to pick up a second sample, let's say um, this one. Also, I'm going to draw a circle here. Give the same label and circle. Then I'm going to download again. So close this slide. I'm going to have here at the end, um, at the end, the other slide. So uh, this way you can add uh, more uh, manual annotations in the same file. And, and then if you want to look at this, we can go to clusters, uh, I think the cluster starts on here, cluster B. And I can um, ask to visualize, uh, this is a distinct variable. 
This is a manual annotation. And I'm going to upload three. So you can look at here the circles that I annotated. And here's the label that I give to, to this um to this annotation. So remember that I only use the first two samples to do this. So that is why you can see this way. Um okay, and this is uh, what I have for today is that we can uh, play with the data here. You can um, you can try different options. It really is very powerful um, to use a, a graphic uh, interface to do this. Uh, it's easier and also is a, a, way, a practical way to make uh, a manual annotation. So you can then import your data in your, in your art studio or in your whatever uh, environment that you use, and you can manipulate this information. So this is very practical in these terms. You can also uh, download the information and you can check with whatever people. You can also have the, the CSV file. Uh, also, uh, another final comment regarding the manual annotation is that if you are not uh, happy with the label that you give, you don't need to do all this stuff again. You can go directly to the the CSV file and you can change it here directly. Um, so instead to, to use my circle, I can use my circle to let's say to make it more uh, more with more detail. And then you can just uh, here um, you have an option to to select the to select the, the file again, for example, here. I'm going to change this one. Please save the file again. So here we are going to browse. And now the label change. So this is practical when you are not sure about uh, if the names are the names of the labels are correct. You can change it for a new name. Uh, so this is all what I have for this meeting. Uh, yeah, you have questions regarding these topics. Uh, yeah, please. Okay. So thank you so much to be here. See you next time.